Welcome to the paediatric speciality. This video will cover the vaccination schedule for babies and children. There are a couple of questions to begin. Question one is which vaccines are given at two months old? The answer to question one is option A. The six in one pneumococcal, rotavirus and meningitis B vaccines are all given at two months old as the baby's first set of injections. Question two is how is the rotavirus vaccine delivered? Different vaccines are given via different routes for administration. The answer here was option B. The rotavirus vaccine is given orally as a sweet tasting gel. The last question is at what ages is the six in one injection given? The six in one injection covers diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, polio, haemophilus influenza type B and hepatitis B. The answer to question three is option C, two, three and four months old. This is an overview of what will be covered in this video. We will go over what the vaccination schedule is, why it has been put in place, what it actually involves and some situations when it is not given. We will then finish off with a couple more questions. As you can read here, the vaccination schedule is a series of vaccines and ages at which they are given. In some countries it is compulsory, but it is only recommended here in the UK. The idea of a vaccine is to provide immunity against one or several diseases by introducing an antigenic or synthetic substance into the body. Vaccines may be live attenuated in which an infectious agent is taken and its virulence reduced so that it cannot cause infection. However, it is still sufficient to provide an immune response. Inactivated vaccines consist of pathogens that have been grown in culture and then killed using methods such as heat or formaldehyde. They are not able to cause infection. Recombinant vaccines are produced using recombinant DNA technology. DNA encoding an antigen is inserted into a human or mammalian cell. These cells then express the antigen and the antigen is purified from it. Toxoid vaccines use bacterial exotoxins that have been inactivated. As you'll be able to see later on, many vaccines are given multiple times to give the maximal effect. This slide lists some of the reasons as to why the vaccination schedule was introduced. The main reason is to provide herd immunity, which is the idea that enough of the population are immune to a disease, the disease will not be able to spread and so the spread of a disease is limited. Another reason that may become increasingly important with the development of antibiotic resistance is that it can help limit drug resistance. If less people fall ill with a disease, less people need treatment with antibiotics. We will go through these vaccines in more detail, but here is a list of the vaccines involved within this schedule. As mentioned in the first set of questions, the 6-in-1 vaccine protects against diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, polio, Hib and Hep B. These are all six serious infections. It is usually injected into the thigh as the deltoid muscle is not sufficient for IM injection at this stage of life. The side effects for a lot of the vaccines, especially those given via an injection, are similar. They can all be relieved by giving Capot or ibuprofen depending on the baby's age. The pneumococcal vaccine provides immunity against streptococcus pneumoniae, which is a common cause of pneumonia and meningitis. It is given at 8 weeks, 16 weeks and 1 year old. The side effects are very similar to those of the 6-in-1 vaccine, but also include a very high temperature that can lead to febrile seizures. However, this is rare. Rotavirus is a very common cause of diarrhoea and vomiting, which can cause severe dehydration in children. The vaccine is given at 8 and 12 weeks of age. It is a sweet tasting gel and because of this reason it is often given as the last vaccine in the appointment to help calm babies down after their other injection. There is the possibility that the vaccine itself can cause mild infection as it is a live vaccine but this is rare. Meningitis B can cause severe meningitis and sepsis. The vaccine to prevent this is given at 8 weeks, 16 weeks and 1 year of age and it is injected into the thigh. The next vaccine is the combined Hib and Mensi vaccine which provides immunity against Haemophilus influenzae and meningitis. It is given at 1 year of age and can either be given in the upper arm or thigh depending on the child. 
As well as the usual side effects, there is the possibility that this vaccine can cause a skin rash. The MMR vaccine is against measles, mumps and rubella, which are three highly contagious viral infections. It is first given at one year of age and then again when the infant is three years and four months old. The manufacturer's advice is that it should be given as a subcutaneous infection, but the evidence suggests iron injection has the same efficacy. A side effect of note with this vaccine is idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura, which results from abnormally low platelet levels. It usually appears over the extremities and on mucous membranes. The children's flu vaccine is given to reduce the number of children admitted to hospital with complications of flu, such as bronchitis and pneumonia. Compared to the adult vaccine, which is given as an injection, it is a nasal spray that is given at the start of every school year for children aged 2 to 8. It is a live vaccine and therefore has the ability to cause mild flu-like symptoms. The preschool booster vaccine is given at 3 years and 4 months of age. It is given for protection against diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis and polio. Pertussis is also known as whooping cough. The HPV vaccine has been very successful in reducing the prevalence of cervical cancer. This is because it gives protection against HPV types 16 and 18, which are mostly associated with cervical cancer. It also gives protection against types 6 and 11, which can cause genital warts. The vaccine is given to females in year 8. The 3-in-1 teenage booster follows on from the 4-in-1 preschool booster. This vaccine covers diphtheria, tetanus and polio and is given to children when they are 14 years old as an intramuscular injection into the deltoid muscle. The final vaccine to talk about is the MEN ACWY vaccine which is given at age 14 and also to new university students aged 19 to 25. It is protective against four different strains of meningitis which are A, C, W and Y. These next two slides have a summary of the different vaccines given at different ages and might be a helpful way to help revise the vaccination schedule. The last objective to go through is the situations in which vaccinations may not be given. The same vaccine or a vaccine with the same component would not be given to a child who has had a previous anaphylactic reaction to this. Live vaccines are also not given to children who are unwell at the time the vaccine is due as there is an increased chance of side effects. There are three more questions just to finish off. Question 1 is which diseases does the 3 in teenage booster protect against? This vaccine is given at 14 years of age. The answer here is option C. The 3 in teenage booster protects against diphtheria, tetanus and polio. Question 2 is at which site is the 6-in-1 vaccine delivered? The answer here is option B. The 6-in-1 vaccine is delivered into the thigh. And the final question for this video is what type of vaccine is the HPV vaccine? This is given to us aged 12 to 13. It is a recombinant vaccine which is option C. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it has been helpful.